Hi guys, welcome to OCD Recovery Real Talk once more and we're here to talk about setbacks and relapses because um I think it's a topic that many people wanted us to cover as well someone mentioned it and I thought it would be good to have a look at it. I think we've done it before but might as well try to have a new conversation about it and see um what else we can uncover with that. Um also like just a disclaimer everybody will go through a setback uh whether we like it or not so what counts is our approach and our perspective of what a setback is and how we like come back from it so um harley have you ever had a setback on the ocd recovery journey of course yeah i've had many setbacks um especially during like the beginning period of when i first started my recovery it was like setback after setback um and now i kind of view setbacks as a way to just um i view them as many things i view them as like a way to just level up your recovery journey um and you also see it as you see it you really see for me i really saw setbacks as i really saw how ocd could latch to many different things during a setback because once you get over one fear you start to see many things that will lay dormant and i find it as a way to really progress and there's always room for improvement whether it be in your recovery journey and like in your life skills as well that you gain from recovering from OCD as well um as tough as they are i always view them as a way to just like i said just progress and just help me gain my knowledge on OCD and the disorder itself and yeah um like i said very tough but they're very in a way that they're, they're also needed in a way i would say because like i said it helps you progress and helps you gain your knowledge even further yeah Could because you you... go ahead sam imagine how easy that would be if you started the journey never had a setback and then you recover <laughs> I, i i would say they're lying <laughs> yeah easy easy completely easy peasy and i mean like i think uh, i think that's a really good way of looking at it like leveling up and also mm-hmm. i think if you don't have setbacks you don't even recognize a lot of the time what are some of the areas that need some work you know you don't re- you don't recognize mm-hmm. um the areas that are weak in terms of acceptance maybe even maybe some compulsive behaviors that can that you that are enlightened for you because of mm-hmm. uh, the setback as well because you go through something and you start doing something compulsively and then you're like oh wait like i feel like this is compulsion so it's definitely more mm-hmm. knowledge building more awareness um a bit a more of a learning curve through uh through mm-hmm. setbacks as well and that i i personally i feel like that is the best way that you can look at a setback that it's a learning curve that yeah. that mm-hmm. is because if 100%. you don't take it as a learning curve if you see it as a chip on your shoulder then you're only going to beat yourself up for it and not feel good at all so you have to see it yeah. as a learning curve and like harley said like a level up thing maha what about you Yeah, it's, it's really difficult to it's really difficult to um to have that mindset at the beginning because when you want to recover you just want to get rid of all these feelings and emotions you're like uh oh, I don't want to experience that again um and then you 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 fight yourself when you have a setback it's like oh why did I do that and then for me I used to um I used to go into that self pity um Uh, way of thinking is like oh it's it's me i'm not doing it right um, there's something wrong with me you know it's i shouldn't have a setback <laughs> um but like it's interesting what you guys said because i also viewed it like eventually it was like when i have a setback i push and when i push myself i'm like oh i didn't know i could reach that level of recovery you know wow i wasn't actually I, fully recovered i could improve so much so now it's like when i have a setback it's the back of my head's like oh you could actually see something completely mm. new something good at the end of it yeah i had many along my journey um as everyone does <laughs> but i felt particularly disheartened on on mine because it feels like you're back to square one doesn't it when you feel like you've made progress and you feel you might have a glimpse of freedom or you're seeing things more rationally or, or you're not as triggered as much and then you get hit with a setback is is like a slap in the face now uh, you know saying oh, i've made no progress is so easy to say that that black and white thinking you know when we go zero to 100 
and you say, no, actually, you're having a good few couple of days, just because you're triggered again, it doesn't mean that you've made no progress, but it's so easy to go down that thinking, isn't it? But like you guys were saying, that when you start viewing setbacks and triggers and relapses as an opportunity to overcome, like a learning curve, um, and seeing how you still need to brush up on the tools in many different areas, um, as Harley said, when it, it lays dormant in the back brain, because if you're still doing compulsions, you know, it, OCD is going to hit you eventually. If you're refusing to give up the, even the smallest of compulsions, you're giving that attention and that power to OCD to latch. Right. And if you're still quite irrational in certain areas around particular fears, then you're giving OCD that power. So if you look at it as right, it's highlighting what I still need to work on. And I think that's so vital, isn't it? Because it's so easy to get so downbeat when you think of a setback and I go again, I do I cope, I can't be bothered, blah, blah, blah. And when you see it as right, what still needs work? And you're seeing it as a positive rather than a negative. <laughs> yeah. I think you because I mean if you really even think about it, like what's the other option with having a setback? Right? Even if we try to brainstorm some other alternatives to how we perceive a setback. What is the other yeah. alternative? Exactly. And you still gotta go through it. And if you're making immediate change, that can be a problem as well. Nick talks about that a lot. So as soon as you feel crap. Not even a setback, you might just be on a, a, a rough day, or, you know, low mood, whatever. And you're making that change, okay, what's not working? Sometimes you ought to just ride it out and let it play out because you'll be making changes every 10 minutes if you're not careful with OCD, especially when you're quite new into the journey because it's going to doubt everything, isn't it? Is this working? Um, I'm not quite getting this book, so you're going to be reading the page over and over and over again, right? So sometimes you've got to just let that play out, and, you know, and just give it a, I don't know, a couple of weeks, but don't make that immediate instant change. Look for that quick mm -hmm. fix. I also like... like to think that, um, uh, oh, sorry, Holly, go, no, go on. No, go for it, go for it. Um, I used to, actually, no, I, what I want to say is that um, I like to think, I like to expect it. Oh, like, I used to fight the idea of it, but then I slowly changed and I'm like, okay, I'm going to expect yeah. to have a setback, you know? Like, wh why is it so bad to have a setback? Like, even that I needed to work on. Yeah, that into made a big difference that internal mm. resistance because we're so scared of having a setback and that's massive for fear of fear isn't it if we're so scared mm -hmm. of stuck again then that's what we're watching on how we're feeling like a hawk the internal the door wide open for that and i think like when you have when you start to become really anxious again or you like I said you have a setback that's when a lot of people including myself at the time I started to then really put a lot more effort into my recovery like I would start reading the books just all trying to get like a quick fix and it shouldn't be like that you should start making an effort yeah. regardless of how you're feeling um but it's it's almost like human nature to want to get the books out again because you want to try and get any part any bit of quick knowledge that you can or try and get a quick fix get rid of the feeling this, yeah, you shouldn't, that's, that's not why, the best thing to do, like Sam said. Look, not look that's why it's important not to wait until a crisis to work on recovery. Because I did mm -hmm. that for so long. You know, I coasted for ages, for months. And then I'd suddenly hit rock bottom again. And off I'd go run into the books, run into the notepad to dispute, looking for a quick exposure. I did that a lot. But as we're working on recovery, getting into that routine of work on it, and not waiting until we feel crap or judging how we're feeling. We just need to keep working on it and working on it and working on it and see what might happen. And I think two things over here, like with what Maha said as well, I think it's really important to remember that we're not only scared of doing badly again. It's also that we take a setback and a relapse as this ego hit as well, that somehow we have failed or that we are we have done poorly or we have disappointed ourselves. And we attach this. I mean, again, we take this like kind of like really, per we take it very personally that why am I going through a setback? Like, I, sh I shouldn't have been going through it. If I'm going through it, then that means that mm -hmm. either I did something wrong or I have failed at this entire process. So, and obviously that's just not like the best mindset to be in um, mm -hmm. with that. And, mm -hmm. and you really need to also then not take it as this defining moment of your self-esteem, right? Yeah. That, mm -hmm. that I have failed at recovery, so therefore I am a failure. And I am the one. And there's also yeah. this like responsibility towards yourself related belief that comes up over there as well. 
because you feel like a great deal of responsibility towards yourself to make yourself better or to recover from it and when you have a setback you see that as you not fulfilling that responsibility towards yourself right so mm. um that's where then i i had this by the way um in general like i i felt like i was i like that i need to fulfill certain responsibilities and standards for myself and at times more than fear of rejection from other people i was really afraid of my own rejection from myself um uh, and just like living with my self rejection mm. in my own skin that i just thought that was really scary and with working on recovery i think there was a certain element of that i was attaching as well because i was expecting myself to be really mm-hmm. good at it which obviously makes no sense um and when mm-hmm. i whenever i felt like i wasn't good at it i felt like i was failing what i had come to expect from myself wow that's very interesting um i there's something that i used to do as well which was very wrong um i used to when i have a relapse and i used to have like a consistent uh, uh, thought or fear i used to be like okay if i have that coming over many times then the problem is with that thing with the with the actual events that's that i'm scared of uh, for example if it was a relationship ocd you know something with my partner i would be like okay the problem is there otherwise it would have been mm. gone you know why why am i still having it i was i was stuck in that period for a long time but eventually i think what helped me is um just being being okay with having a setback and just thinking like why why do i not why shouldn't i have a setback like why not like you know i don't have control over that and if it happens it happens like what's the worst could happen i already experienced this i think it's because we put a lot of power in the word setback like it seems big scary words than that because we're like oh my god what does that mean like does that mean i can never get better again oh no i can't have a setback now i used to have them a lot around um when i had a big event coming up so a holiday you know birthday christmas because i would just be expecting it because so many years they were just ruined by ocd so as i was getting better and a bit, let's say christmas is coming up i'd be like oh bloody hell we go again you can gradually see it coming up like rising raising its head mm-hmm. so allowing that to happen and not resisting that which is what we've already spoken about dropping that internal resistance like pushing it away we do it all the time but when we go, you know what, I see, do your worst. You, you can ruin Christmas again if you want. You can, I can be true. There's an acceptance of letting anything happen and dropping that internal and um, sort of watching our feeling of how we're yeah. feeling all the time. Because if we're watching that, those of you knows that, it's going to dig its heels in. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And also, I would be aware of uh, that mindset of, um, you know, when you think, um, okay, I'm having set back then. it's that thing it's definitely that thing that's making me have a setback you know and get you know you get so uh fixated on one thing thinking that's the thing and you and you convince yourself that's the thing cuz you're trying to get out of it and then it doesn't work and then you're trying to find something else to blame yeah but sometimes mm-hmm. you hear people label setbacks and all it is is that it is triggered right so you get triggered for one minute oh my god i'm having a setback and then step back you, you know let's take it a minute at a time an hour at a time you're not having this worst setback in the world all your eyes triggered all right let it play out and because it's because that big scary word of setback or relapse and this is what people go from 0 to 100 and like, oh my god this is the worst thing in the world all it is you're triggered you're scared of something you know take us take your foot off the gas don't just try and work it all out immediately mm-hmm. it should be yeah. fine though because you still look fine you still sound okay as well so. okay yeah that's fine so the other thing i was going to say was what i think what harley said was also absolutely key and what sam touched on too is not making quick changes because it's very easy to and this goes not just for setbacks this goes for even just getting triggered as well that as soon as you start feeling like something is coming up you're like okay immediately let's double down on my tools you know let's try yeah. to quickly watch a video let's try to quickly dispute or read a book or try to you know remind myself of all the things 
or maybe read my old disputing exercise so that I can, you know, get back into that mindset. Um, when you're feeling triggered or when you're when you feel like you're having a setback, an important thing can be to just let yourself feel that way for a few days, at the very least, um, and then start trying to take a few gradual steps towards like, okay, what can I do to change this, or what can I do to like improve this, right? Um, because if you're if you're going to be like, you know, it's like um, it's like trying to like pull the handbrake on a ski going down a slope. Like you're, yeah. you're not going to be able like to that. because it's still going to go slipping down there on yeah. that. Mm. So you probably it, crashed it. Yeah. What so what you're only doing there is just literally delaying the process and like just making yourself feel even more fearful and anxious uh on the mm. ride down there. But like, because you also know that you feel yourself slipping and it's really not like you're trying to hold back and you're, it's not working. So you also have to let yourself fall for a second. Um, yeah. And then pick, pick yeah. the pieces back up because that helps with not like putting up that rigid resistance to be like, no, I can't feel this way. I can't go back to it. That shows your brain that, oh, look, you're still fearful of that. So then it holds that over us um as mm -hmm. leverage that this person is still afraid of this you know um and that's where it makes uh, feel worse and what, what i used to do thinking back at my setbacks that i'd be triggered right and then it'd be like a snowball effect i then perform loads of compulsions to sort of look for relief so because i was triggered like by a big thing or, or i'm feeling quite bad or, or feeling rough or feeling guilty whatever to then get rid of that feeling, oh, I do loads of compulsions, you know, and check in or or asking for reassurance, confession, right? So that it just leads to one thing to the other. And this is why it's so crucial just to let that play out because it's so easy to then go into loads of other compulsions, right? All it is is you're triggered by one thing. Just let that play out. You don't have to make an immediate quick fix. You don't have to go and get the book out. You don't have to get your notepad out. Just let that play out initially. It's the same with exposures as well, not even compulsions, because like you'll you'll start to then do loads of loads of exposures as well. Like just get rid of that quick feeling. So like, yeah. like doing exposures and doing compulsion really go hand in hand, especially during a setback. And yeah. a, even the word like, point. yeah. And even like going back to your point, Sam, about the word setback, like even the word like setback, it makes you feel like you're taking two steps back when really, like you said, you're just scared. You're just scared of something right now. Things have been laying <laughs> dormant. Yeah. yeah. So it's very interesting. And what do you say, um, what do people need to do in order to go from where they are now being scared of setbacks and, and, and that internal resistance to, to becoming, you know, um, um, comfortable with setbacks to where we are now? So what's, what's your, what did you have to do? someone is in that area now what do they need to do to reach that level where we are now taking the fear out of the set because there's always a subtle fear of fear right because you can mm -hmm. work on your let's say you've got phd harm ocd you can work on the specific fears around that you know fear of rejection going to jail whatever mm -hmm. but most of the time it's the fear of being stuck forever which what this is what keeps people stuck i kept me stuck for years i never realized that mm -hmm it was so subtle mm -hmm. right and that's why i used to monitor the time i was feeling am i feeling guilty am i feeling crap right so just not just drop in how you feel if i'm feeling crap today you know i'm going to do whatever i'm going to do regardless i'm going to go to work i'm going to go see my friends i'm going to go exercise all right don't wait until you recover to start living life mm -hmm. i think that's such a key point for yeah yeah yep. and that takes practice it's not going to happen you know first time you say that to yourself or you do it like you know you adapt that mindset it's going to take practice yeah. and practice and over and over and over but yeah. it's going to get easier yeah, yeah. and what i tell people when you are in a setback don't try you can to resist the compulsions at that time right because that mm. long term that's going to help you short term you're going to feel like you're going to need mm. to do compulsions but long term resisting that urge that's that's the most, that's the biggest benefit for you mm. yeah no yeah i think that... so it's like you're basically working on Sorry, I think you're basically working on disputing your your core fears, but also working on 
accepting the 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 whatever you're going through that's another another area that you need to work on not just like do the and a lot of the disputing the themes yeah, and the things and a lot of the fear of fear is actually just living life right because if you try and sit and nail it down of i'm not scared of this you you've got to show your brain you're not scared of it by living life by going to work by socializing by going on holiday right because it's, it's right just sitting down writing it down on a notepad you've got to actually show your brain that mm. yeah I think um but if you got a holiday coming up and you got um, going for that, you, you've got to go to remember you can't wait the, until the setback drop. Yeah, sorry. Um I think some key things to remember with setback sorry about you. um one is trying not to give into compulsions as soon as you start feeling triggered after a significantly good period. So firstly, resisting compulsions is like a big thing because if you're giving into compulsions again, then you're reinforcing the fear cycle. Number one, there's that. Number two, not seeing setbacks as a life sentence, but seeing them as another hurdle to overcome. Um, number three is that setbacks can also reveal to us, um, maybe already in the background, we, are, we have been doing some lingering compulsions, but we don't even know what they are, or we have been avoiding certain things, you know? So people like people come in all the time who have been doing quite well for some time and they start to then feel like bad, you know, after a while. And they're like, oh, I don't know why I'm feeling bad. And when you talk to them, you realize that they have been doing some compulsions, like still there are some lingering compulsions that they have been doing. And there is that one moment where it all like kind of like boils over, you know, um, and it comes to the forefront. So looking at, are there any like lingering compulsive avoidance behaviors that you're still doing, right? That you need to tackle. Uh, and also with, with avoidance, right? We've got to be so careful not to un unhealthy distractions, right? Because I remember many times when triggered, you know, I'd have to quickly escape, right? If I use a drinking, for example, because I'd, I'd escape by doing mm -hmm. that. So I might drink more than I'd like, mm -hmm. right? Because that was a mechanism for me. Okay, so we've got to be very careful mm -hmm. not doing that. Okay, because that's not discomfort. That's not building frustration tolerance. If as soon as we're triggered, we're, you know, we're going to the, the, the drink, you know, trying to get rid of it. That's the opposite. Okay, it's all part of just allowing that to happen and let it play out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, Maha, I think we should also do a post on this as well. On setbacks and oh. dealing with that. Mm -hmm. So we can brainstorm about that. Um, yeah, that's... Call as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You can do that. Yeah. Um, guys, I have to go to a call now. But um, so this is going to be a bit of a shorter real talk. But again, thanks for being here. And next week, maybe we can I have think... uh, another couple of people join in as well. And um, I think we covered a lot. Though, yeah, in a we short did. space of time. Mm. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, sometimes you need to keep it short and sweet, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. guys. <laughs> Thanks for being here. All right. Bye. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye, everyone. guys. Bye.